Hello and welcome to this section of the TI-89 Calculator Tutor. Uh, in this section we're going to switch gears completely and begin to talk about solving differential equations with this calculator. And I have to say, I mean there are limitations to what it can do, but just the fact that you can solve any differential equation in a handheld device in a pretty quick amount of time is, is really amazing actually. Uh, so just keep in mind, it's not a supercomputer. If you type a complicated differential equation in, it's a good chance it won't be able to solve it. Or if it can solve it, uh, it'll sometimes put the solution in a form that doesn't really look, look really nice to you. Uh, but uh, And sometimes it won't be able to solve it at all. But in those cases, I mean, you, you need to take the good with the bad. I mean, the fact that it can solve any of them is a good deal. So when you're starting out in differential equations, uh, learning all of the solution methods can be daunting, but the fact that you can do a little bit of these guys in your calculator is really a really a good thing. So the TI-89 can, uh, in a built-in fashion, solve first order and second order differential equations. Uh, when you get higher than that, the calculator really isn't going to be able to help you out too much. Uh, but the good news is in real life, uh, first and second order equations really cover an enormous amount of, of real life problems in engineering and, and other sciences and math and things like that. So it, it can really solve practical problems is really what I'm trying to say. So what we need to do to access it is look under the calculus menu. We've spent quite a bit of time doing differentiation and integration and limits and sums and things like that. But if you scroll past the arc length, there's one biggie down here that we never did talk about, and that's DE solve, differential equation solve. That is the magic command that's going to solve your differential equations. Now, before we actually get into typing in our differential equation and solving it, it's a good idea to go to the cleanup menu, F6, so that's second function and up here. Clear your single variable, uh, single letter variables out, just clear them. Uh, because if you start typing in a differential equation with X and Y and you have values stored in X and Y, then you're gonna, it's going to lead to problems. So just clear it out. And uh, at this point, we're ready to go. So let's go into the, back to the calc menu. And let's scroll down to DE solve, differential equation solve. So like I said, the calculator has a built-in ability to solve uh, first order and second order differential equations. It can solve homogeneous differential equations and it can solve non-homogeneous differential equations. That means that you have a, a forcing function on the right-hand side of the equal sign, uh, non-zero or zero, depending on how, how that's set up, it's going to be called non-homogeneous or homogeneous. And it also has the ability to solve uh, initial, initial value problems. In other words, a uh, differential equation with an initial condition. So we'll learn all of these things in due time. But first, let's start with the basics. The way you input a differential equation into this calculator is you use the prime button. This is a prime. So you know how you say uh, y prime? That means uh, dy dx. So you're going to end up using this. And in general, you're going to be using y as a function of, of x, or, or y, uh, y for the uh, dependent variable and x for the independent variable generally. You don't have to do that, but it's, it's just a good idea to go ahead and do that. So if we want to take a differential equation, a very simple one, then we could say 3 times y second function prime uh, plus y we could say that's equal to zero. This is a pretty simple differential equation. This means three times dy dx uh, plus y is equal to zero. It's homogeneous because what we have on the right hand side, the equal sign is just zero. And uh, it's linear because of the definition of a linear equation from differential equations. So notice you do not have to put y prime parentheses of x. You don't do that. When you just uh, list a derivative in this calculator, you just put y prime. Now you need to tell the calculator what the dependent and the independent variables are. So after you type your equation and you have to put a comma, put your independent variable first and then put another comma and then put your dependent variable. Close your parentheses out. So this is a full command. Differential equation solve 3 uh, times y prime plus y is equal to 0. Now x is your independent variable and y is your dependent variable. All right, the other thing I'm going to say is be very explicit. When you intend multiplication, put a multiplication symbol. If you put 3 and then y prime, or if later on you put x and then y prime, the calculator might get confused when you put things right next to each other. It may not know if you mean to multiply it or if you mean to, like if you put xy, it might think you're, you're naming a variable named xy and taking the derivative of that instead of the multiplication. So just put a multiplication symbol everywhere. 
All right, so let's go ahead and hit enter and see what happens. It thinks for a second and then out pops a solution just that fast. Now, in a calculus class or in a differential equations class, you learn right away that when you find the general solution of a, uh, uh, an equation like this, there's no initial conditions, right? So because there's no initial conditions, you're going to have some constants running around. The number of constants you have in your answer should be equal to the, num the highest derivative that you have. So in this case, since we have y prime, we only have a first derivative. So this is a first order differential equation. All right, so that means we should have one constant in our answer. So in a book, you'll usually see the constants written as c sub 1, c sub 2, c sub 3, and so on for the number of constants. In the calculator, it uses this ampersand, or this at symbol, I guess is really what it is, uh, at 1. So this 1 is not really a number in the answer. It's telling you constant 1 times e to the negative x over 3. So this is what the answer is. The general solution is constant 1 times e to the minus x over 3. So this is a general solution. It means that it's really an infinite set of solutions because this differential equation is not locked down with any initial condition. So there's really an infinite number of solutions that can satisfy this. And this is sort of illustrated here. You can stick any constant you want here. This constant could be 1. This constant could be 15. This constant could be negative 2 whatever. If you put a constant in there and stick it back into this differential equation and evaluate the derivatives and put it in here, it will satisfy the differential equation. So you only nail down what this constant is when you have an initial condition. All right, and in the next section after this one, we're going to learn how to solve differential equations with initial conditions. So we've solved our first differential equation with the calculator. We get a solution that has one constant because we only have a first derivative going on in there. So we can actually modify this uh, to make it a little more complicated if we want. We can uh, change this, you know, make it two times y if we'd like. Uh, go ahead and hit enter. It'll think for a second, so it gives us a slightly different answer. Now, notice that we get an at 2 here. Uh, we, the reason it's doing that is because up above we have a, a number 1. Here we have a number 2. So you just need to look at your answer. Anytime you see this little, amper, this little um, at symbol, that is a constant. So don't necessarily worry too much about the numbers. Just look in your particular solution and see how many of these you have and that those are the constants that you're going to have. All right. Now we can change this a little bit to make it a little more complicated. We can make it non-homogeneous by just taking off the zero over here and, and putting something in its place. We can start with a, a number right on the right hand side of the equal sign and let it think for a second and now we get a a solution that's a little bit more complicated than what we had. We have something added over to the end here, over, over here. And uh, those of you who are taking differential equations will recognize this as the particular solution of uh, this non-homogeneous differential equation. And you can try to make it even more complicated. Maybe instead of 2, make it 2 times, two times x, for instance. So what we have on the right-hand side of the equal sign is basically a forcing function. It's what sort of input, uh, supplying energy to the system. What we have on the left-hand side is sort of describing the system. Maybe this is describing a spring or something, how it reacts. And this is describing sort of how we push it. So we go ahead and let it think for a second, and we get a much more complicated guy back. We still have one constant in the answer. Uh, this part is basically consistent throughout all of these guys because this is the solution of the homogeneous equation. And over here, this part keeps changing because we keep fiddling with what's on the right-hand side of the equal sign, so our particular solution is changing. But this is still a general solution. It's still an infinite solution set uh, because we have not specified any initial conditions. I can take this equation with any number I want in here and put it into my differential equation and it will work. Uh, and that's basically the same thing that's going on when you integrate something from Calculus 1. If you take an integral, you learn early on that you're going to get constants of integration. The reason is pretty easy to visualize. When you take the derivative of that answer, the constant goes away. So it's the same thing here. When you have a differential equation, if you have a first derivative uh, and you don't have any initial conditions, you're going to have an infinite set of answers. You have a constant going on there. All right, so let's go ahead and um, clear this out, get a little practice in putting some of these guys in. Uh, and we'll make them a little bit more complicated now. So we'll go from the bottom to DE solve. Let's type our equation. Now we've talked about first, first order systems. So we've typed a few of those guys in. First order differential equations, I should say. You can solve second order differential equations as well. So the way you could do that, for instance, would be maybe 2 times uh, y. Uh, in order to do a second derivative, you need to put a double prime. Do not come down here and use this as a double prime. Use two of these guys. So prime 
prime. So that's y double prime, two times y double prime. I'm putting the multiplication there to be explicit. And I can do uh, plus maybe y prime, right? Uh, maybe I'll just keep it there for now and say equals zero. So I have two times second derivative of y with respect to x plus y with uh, dy with respect to x. Uh, so I have second derivative, I have a first derivative equals zero. This is homogeneous. So let me hit comma, independent variable, comma, dependent variable. So if you deal with x and y, x is going to come first, y is going to come second, and that's how you're going to set this guy up. So let's go ahead and hit enter. And notice what I have here. I have a, an exponential term, which we sort of expect with these homogeneous equations with constant coefficients. But instead of one constant, I have two constants. And the reason we have two constants in our answer is because we have a second derivative. So again, it follows the rule. As many derivatives as you have, this is a second derivative here, you should have two constants. Now don't get wrapped up too much that this says five and six. That's just because we've been doing a lot of calculations and it's incrementing those constants. But you can see in our answer we have a constant here and we have a constant here. All right, now we can again play with this and make it a little more complicated. We can put uh, two times y prime. We can even add uh, y by itself. So this reads two times the second derivative of y with respect to x. Uh, plus 2 times the first derivative of y with respect to x plus y is equal to 0. Let's go ahead and see what happens there. It takes a little bit longer this time because there's more to it. We have a constant with an exponential term. We have a cosine term here. Uh, we have another constant here with another exponential term here. And then we have a, another sign term here. So it's important to note, if I haven't already said so, is that the calculator a lot of times will return an answer in a form that's slightly different maybe from what you would have calculated by hand. So if you solve this differential equation and you get an answer, you might get something that looks a little bit different because it's going through an algorithm and it's calculating things a little differently than the techniques they teach in the books. Um, but, you know, you get what you can get. You, you get what you can, you, can, you can take there. So let's go back here and change it a little bit more. Uh, on the right hand side of the equal sign we have a zero, let's change it and put a number over there. So it's not homogeneous anymore, we've got something going on, on the right hand side. Uh, go ahead and hit enter, it'll think for a little bit longer of course because it's not homogeneous and we've got a constant here with an exponential, we've got a cosine term, we've got a constant with an exponential with a sine term and then we have another constant at the end there or a number I should say, but we have two constants overall. So. That's really it. I mean, that's how you use DE solve. It can solve first order and second order differential equations. Now, I'm going to tell you, I've been giving it pretty easy differential equations. I mean, I've given it constant coefficients. If you start putting nonlinear differential equations in here, or if you start putting differential equations in here that have much more complicated forms, then in many cases it'll be able to solve it, but it's just going to give you the answer in a mangled way that's not going to be very pretty. Uh, but it is better than nothing. I mean, it definitely is better than nothing. Uh, so just be aware of that. If you, it's not a supercomputer, so if you throw something crazy at it, it's either not going to be able to solve it, or it's just going to give it back to you in a form that doesn't look like it's it's really nice. All right. So it's good to know. Make sure you play with it. Um, the easiest way to do that is to get your differential equations book out. Uh, and go through some of the example problems and type some of those guys in here. Just remember to put y prime for first derivative, double prime, two of these uh, buttons right here for a second derivative. Use a multiplication symbol here instead of just juxtaposing the things there. That's going to make it much easier. And uh, no matter if it's homogeneous or not, just type it in there, comma x, comma y, and let the solver go do its thing. So play around with it and uh, learn how to do that. Now in the next section, we're going to sort of continue what we're doing here. We're going to solve some more differential equations, but we're going to supply an initial condition and uh, see how the calculator handles those.